What's up guys, today's video is going to be strictly on the deadlift, specifically on the de every uh, variation that goes along with the deadlift. So today I'm going to show you every variation that you can do other than the conventional deadlift, even though I will be throwing in the conventional deadlift in the beginning because it is a variation of a deadlift, it is a type of deadlift. I will also be showing other kinds of deadlifts. What I'll be using in this video for helping me do these variations are things such as bands, one inch blocks being a 45 pound plate. Um, blocks I've made out of wood, so those are six inch blocks, a deadlift platform, and a rack that has pegs so you can do, well you'll see what I'll do with the rack that enables me to do different types of variations. So it should be exciting, you might learn something today, you might be able to throw on these variations after your main movement of deadlifts, or you can use them as your beginning movement, especially if you're on the conjugate system, which I might get in more later down on, the, on a different video explaining why these different variations should be used and how they're used in things such as the conjugate method and what variations you should be using if you're doing the conjugate method and things like that. So I'm going to get in the video right now and show you guys all the different deadlift variations. Let's get into it. Alright guys, getting into the video, I'm going to have to talk fast, but hopefully I'll be clear. The first two variations are the sumo deadlift and the conventional deadlift. I am not going to go over those in extent and more information. If you guys want more information on that, let me know. But the ones I'm going to go over, I'm going to tell you why you should do these lifts. Um, specifically, where your weak point is in your lift. When you're doing your one rep max, where do you fail at and why? And with this failing, why you should do these lifts to improve your one rep max in the future. Okay, we're gonna get into it first, right now. The first real variation we have here is a deficit deadlift. You can either use a 45 pound plate, a 35 pound plate, if your stance is wide, I mean narrow enough, or you can use just a couple pieces of wood or anything you find that is flat to the surface that won't move when you're standing on it and exerting force onto it. The reason why you want to do the deficit deadlift is if your lift at the bottom of your deadlift is not going up during your one rep maxes, like if you're failing at the bottom, you want to do these for sure. The second variation we have here is the block pull. Now to do the block pull or to make the block pull, you can either use pieces of wood on either side or you can use 45s, 35s or just any other plates you can that you can put on either side that won't necessarily break when you throw the bar back down at the object. Now the benefit of a block pull is to work on the lockout portion of your deadlift. So if your lockout or the top portion of your deadlift is poor, then work on this for sure. The next variation is a very cool variation, is the reverse band deadlift. Now to do this, you're gonna need something like a rack where you can take your two bands and put them around and make sure it's a sturdy surface so that it won't fall off the bands. Now to, the reason why you'd wanna do this exercise is very similar to the block pull. The top portion of your deadlift is poor, then you're gonna to wanna to do these reverse band deadlifts. As the band tension at the bottom is stronger and as you pull the bar up, the tension will get less and less, so the weight will become more heavy as you pull the bar up, thus you are working the top portion of your deadlift. So again, if you fail at the top portion of the deadlift, you cannot lock out those last couple inches of the deadlift itself when you're going for PRs, then do these in your training and you will see a gain in strength. This last exercise is the Romanian deadlift. This lift is especially going to hit your posterior chain opposed to your entire leg. It's going to hit the hamstrings and glutes and lower back more than it would just your entire leg and your upper back and everything else. So why you do this is essentially to get more speed off the ground. So if your lifts off the ground are doing bad so you can't lift the bar up and you're failing on the ground, then you're gonna wanna implement these in your training. So guys, that was a good amount of the variations. I'm not, I think we got like five or six variations in. And try these out at home if you like them, let me know. If there's any variations I didn't get to, let me know in the comments section below and um, I'll make sure to put them in another video to show people that there are other variations. I'm sure there's others, so if you guys know them, comment down below the other variations. Like this video, comment, subscribe. Thanks. Peace out, guys.